always perfect. Thank you, Muriel. <laughs> Uh, I guess I should go over the question. Uh, let me quickly go over the answer there. <laughs> is Nash equilibrium, oh, you guys say, what's the Nash equilibrium? You don't want the other people to, uh, to know, right? <laughs> Tough luck. <laughs> so we just want to say, figure it out yourself, right? <laughs> Um, well, not to be mean, I guess. Uh, the Nash equilibrium is uh, they both uh, decide to hire lawyers, and let them work on the uh, the uh, the second part. Is uh, what would they do in rulemaking? What would they do? Okay, chapter six, <laughs> chapter sixteen, uh, bargaining. Um, here we have either a simultaneous move or sequential move. Is there's different outcomes with these. Um, with bargaining, a, it's possible for a player to get a bigger slice of the pie. Whereas chapter 15, they're going strictly down the middle. So that may throw at people. So if you change a simultaneous game into a sequential game um, with a first player, uh, advantage that's really what's happening here in bargaining is if you change acting together to sequential and that's what we see um, uh, my favorite example of this in real life is um, when Wendy's <clears throat> was expanding a great deal Dave Thomas uh, was he was really growing his uh, the franchise didn't have much money had other investors but of course McDonald's by this time, had well over 50% of the market, fast food market for his hamburgers. So they were expanding. Uh, so their best strategy um, was to spend a lot of money uh, surveying the best plots off of interstates. And if you've ever noticed, uh, when you get off interstate to go get something to eat, you'll notice that McDonald's is almost always by a traffic light, always. So they paid more money uh, to be in an intersection where there's a traffic light where people can turn right or left. Um, that takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of planning. Maybe they've even had the traffic lights installed. So what Dave Thomas did is behave in a way of a sequential game. His strategy was, well, let's see what McDonald's does, and we're going to follow it. So literally, he told his people to... Uh, drive up and down the interstate and look for a sign that says uh, a future McDonald's is coming. So his people would find the next best lot and buy that. So next time you're down, driving down the interstate, you get off the gas and stuff, you'll see a Wendy's somewhere near McDonald's, but usually not where a traffic light is. So a pure example is... Um, uh, when the uh, McDonald's already had a p bigger piece of the pie, but turning this game into a sequential game, simultaneous game into a sequential game is uh, Wendy's uh, got a bigger piece of the pie than they would normally have, have had. Um, now, <clears throat> threats, credible commitments are difficult to make. Uh, because they require, which is important, to commit to a course of action against their own self-interest. That's what's difficult, is um, uh, Dave Thomas did the opposite. He acted in his own, uh, best interest. Now, the best threat is one you never have to use. That's the hard bargaining stuff. Uh, strategic view of bargaining focuses on the, how the outcome of bargaining, the bargaining game depends on who moves first and who can commit to a bargaining position as well as whether the other player can make a counter offer. Um, so the bargaining hard, again, violates that, that rule. The non traditional view of bargaining focuses on the gains and alternatives to agreements to determine the outcome of bargaining. So the main insight, gains from agreement relative to the alternatives to agreement determine the terms of an agreement. So the gains you, uh, gains you make from depend on the alternatives. So anything you could do to increase your opponent's relative gains from reaching agreement 
or decrease your own will improve your bargaining position. So here we go. There's an answer to that uh, one question is, again, creating a win-win situation, win-win situation. And we see this all the time, and especially labor, labor uh, contracts and so forth. Um, lawyers are real good at this. Um, so I always like to turn it over to, to you guys in that maybe someday, maybe you already have, is when you're negotiating your contract for something, go back to chapter 15 and 16, and uh, you, you never know. Um, uh, we have a, a, or maybe read the art of the deal or something like that. I don't know if uh, uh, our president, well, he went to uh, the Warden School of, uh, of Business, so maybe he knows. Um, any questions so far? Okay, problem set 14. Uh, there are, uh, again, one of my strict, uh, uh, strict interpretation of reading your answers is, did you answer both questions? There's two questions here. Uh, what's the likely bargaining negotiation outcome of the advertisers bargain by telling each other, each paper, that they're going to reach agreement with the other paper? So the gains to reach an agreement are only nine bucks. So they're telling each other what's happening. The Nash bargaining outcome tells us that the parties split the gains from agreement. Again, split. Pre-merger each newspaper splits the gains to agreement, which are $9. So each paper receives $250. There's where I want to see some numbers, is to say they going down the middle, pre-merger is they both get $4.50. After the merger, they bargained together and split $19. So the merged newspaper gets $9.50, increase of 50 cents. So here we say why do, why do uh, companies merge is the bigger payoff. So they have an increase of 50 cents. So two, two, different, two answers there, two different questions. Nash bargaining is pre-merger, they split nine bucks. They get uh, 450, and merged newspaper gets 950, so they have an increase of 50 cents. Everybody get that one? Split nine dollars, and uh, after the merger, bargain together, they split 950. <laughs> they split 19 19 dollars. So the merged newspaper gets 950. They split nineteen dollars. Okay. Uh, questions, comments. Think you're all doing well. There's two weeks left. Um, and I will try to continue to put sample questions up. Um, um, as much as I can, especially at the end of the, near the end of the course. Questions or- Dr. Muley, were yes. there any PowerPoints for these two chapters? Because they're not on the- No, there are none, I'm sorry. That's okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've uh, in the past put up uh, other PowerPoints from other books, but it just doesn't work. I, if I had them, I would. Uh, for some reason, uh, they weren't published, and uh, so and the uh, videos are not from uh, the book either. So I don't know uh, what happened there. So I rely on the book pretty heavily, but we'll go over those uh, problems next week. Thanks for telling me about the record, recording. <laughs> I always forget that. Can you go back over on problem set 13, the second question again yeah. real quick? Sure. Um, what if both sides ban lawyers? Well, that's a typical thing. They make up a rule to make it, the payoffs better for themselves. Uh, the best payoff is they both don't hire a lawyer. So they make up the rule. 
to come out the better. In other words, they know the payoff. That's the key to these games, especially in chapter 15, is they know the payoff. But they don't know what their um, uh, opponent's going to do instead of uh, – so they have to make up even the uh, uh, sequential game is you've already made up your mind what you're going to do if your opponent does this. But you don't know what they're going to do. So, um, But they know the payoffs. And so basically, they just eliminate uh, the game by creating a rule, changing the game. And that's the answer is that's why they ban the lawyers is because they know the payoffs. And the payoff is greater if they don't hire a lawyer. <clears throat> Which is uh, like uh, if you're trying to buy a house and if you... <laughs> If you can get to the, the seller before they list, you both win, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, anybody sell real estate? Anybody know a real estate agent? Yes. If you mention that, they'll get really mad at you. And in fact, uh, um, I don't really delve in real estate much anymore, but... Um, if a uh, um, if a real estate agent um, sees a sale by owner, they won't uh, tell their buyers about it. You're on your own. See, somebody had a question. Why is uh, three hundred thousand? Somebody have that question. Let me see here. I think it has to do with the first question on the Nash equilibrium. Where did the 300,000 come from? But I think the answer to that, what you said earlier, was you're, they're going to cooperate and split the payoff by when they both hire lawyers. That That's right. That's right. Situation. Okay. Yeah. So there's right. no math, right? No math, no. Okay. Yeah, thanks again. Yeah, no math. Don't worry about the math. Just get the sense that they split things down the middle. That's Nash equilibrium. And if you get a chance, go on YouTube and uh, look at, uh, there's a, a scene or two uh, in The Beautiful Mind where uh, he is sitting in a bar with his buddies and he comes up with this idea of the Nash equilibrium that is supposed to be oh, true. Um, not particularly the way they did it, but um, uh, very uh, interesting, interesting man. I've... Um, visited Princeton. He was with, he was at Princeton all of his life. And um, unfortunately, he uh, was a schizophrenic and uh, the poor man still made contributions, but a lot of his day, he would spend bicycling in a circle in the, their quadrangle. That's all he would do. It's kind of, kind of sad what he could have done. So any questions? Any other questions? Uh, very good. Thanks, Jason. <laughs> He's smiling. Yeah. So you play the guitar, I see. A little. A little, that means you do. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sarah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing right. good. Fantastic. Oh. Fantastic. Okay, if I've enjoyed um, you all being in and... Uh, um, Patrick, you do a real good job at uh, not uh, the rest of you do too. Really good job of uh, really. Uh, you ought to teach economics some, somewhere, mm -hmm. somehow. Can I convince you to do that? <laughs> uh, probably not for me. Oh shoot. Okay. <laughs> Maybe something else. I don't know. About Maybe something else. Okay. Well. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. See ya.